Hi, this is the hybrid day date that I will be discussing today. The schedule at my new job changes every week. Also, the time of day that I have to work now varies from afternoons to evenings. This is so disorienting for me that I never know what day it is. Accordingly, I was in need of an affordable, comfortable day-day dive watch. I prefer dive watches as they're durable, have easy to use timers, and at least should have good loom. My criteria for a decent affordable day-day diver are as follows. It must be reasonably comfortable to wear. It must have a metal bracelet. It must not have any sharp parts. It must have a readable day-date. It must have either a hacking movement if it's a mechanical or a solar powered movement if it's a quartz. It must have decent crown operation and vacuum seal. It must have a sapphire crystal. It must have either a ceramic or a sapphire coated bezel. It must be $500 or less. These criteria are not a lot to ask, but I've searched high and low for such a watch and have reviewed some potential candidates when I was doing watch reviews on this channel. These include the Orient Kamasu, the Islander ISL-02, which is a Seiko SKX knockoff, the Hemi SKX-007, another Seiko SKX knockoff, and the Seiko SRP-E03, also known as the King Turtle. Recently, I noticed that Long Island Watch, which I will refer to as LIW, had released a new panda-colored variant of their SKX knockoff, model number ISL-35, which I'll call the Panda. The release of the Panda gave me the opportunity to try out my hybrid watch idea. I did not do this before because the Islander's date, which uses a small font, is crammed into a way too small date cutout, which makes it challenging to read. My idea was that since the background color of the panda's dial was white, this might make it easier to read the day and date as it would be read against a white dial background. While the day-date cutout of the Panda is still crappy, the white dial background does in fact make the day and date easier to read. There were significant changes made to LIW's SKX knockoff since the original batch that I reviewed. I will cover these changes after I discuss my hybrid. One thing that LIW hasn't improved is its crappy clasp with its sharp edges and only three micro adjusts when it should have four. LIW gets away with this screwing of the consumer because LIW can. There's very little competition. Instead of engineering good quality clasps consistent with the overall good quality of the rest of LIW's SKX knockoff, LIW has instead invested in the development of a myriad of new knockoffs that all appear to use the same junk clasp. My hybrid is made from the case of a Panda and the bracelet of a Seiko 5 Sports, a watch that I've reviewed on this channel. I didn't know for sure my hybrid concept would work until I tried it. I knew that the Seiko 5 Sports should fit the Panda as LIW says it's compatible with Seiko SKX parts. From the information that I had, I was pretty sure that the Seiko 5 Sports case was compatible with the Seiko SKX, though not certain as there is so much bad information circulating on the internet. I called Seiko to get a price of the Seiko 5 clasp. With shipping, it's about $50. Seiko told me that they're out of stock right now, but they're expecting more next month. My hybrid wears like a Seiko 5 Sports, which I knew wore well from reviewing it. The only significant difference between the shape of the case of the Sports and the Panda is that the Panda's case is a little thicker. Is my hybrid a great watch? No, the day dates font could be bigger, aligned better, and could still use some more margin, but it's doable now. The bracelet, while very smooth, could use some more taper. In the world of $500 watches, this is about as good as it gets in the comfort department. One thing I really like about the Sports' clasp is that it has virtually no bulk and no sharp edges. 
Some people will wig because the clasp scissor is made of thin metal and the end links are hollow. These are issues that might be important if one were buying a high-end watch that one expects to last a lifetime and pass it on to his or her heirs. I suspect the movement of the Panda will need servicing well before the bracelet and the clasp wear out, and the movement is so cheap that it will not pay to replace it. At this point, my hybrid will be chucked into the trash, and Seiko will probably have made a smaller version of their turtle that meets my specifications. I'll probably not have to worry about buying another watch anyway, as we will all probably have died from starvation from drought caused by global warming well before my panda's movement needs servicing. After I put the sports' clasp on the panda's case, there was a little bit of a rattle. I replaced one of the sports' spring bars that looked a little shoddy, but the rattle was still there. The panda spring bars were too thick to fit the sports' end links. I could try buying higher quality spring bars in hopes that this gets rid of the rattle, but I probably won't because I, I think it's unlikely the rattle is caused by the spring bars. The rattle is only slightly annoying and I'm already getting used to it. The end links feel secure in the Panda's case and that's what's important. Here are some of the changes that I've made to the Islanders SKX knockoff that I spoke about earlier. Again, I reviewed the uh, first batch of SKX knockoffs. While the polishing on the sides of the Panda's case is fine and on par with the sports' polishing, it doesn't seem as nice as the first batch of SKX knockoffs that I reviewed. The Panda's loom, while adequate, doesn't seem as bright as the loom of the first batch. The first batch had enough loom for three watches. The Panda came with a screwdriver for sizing its bracelet. I have bought two LIW watches prior to the Panda. Neither came with a screwdriver. This tool will save thousands of customers who don't have precision screwdrivers a massive pain in the ass. This is a great improvement. The Panda's bezel is much looser than the original batch of SKX knockoffs and has a completely different feel to it. It no longer lines up properly and there is a fair amount of back play now. It's also much less smooth. Despite these flaws, I greatly prefer the Panda bezel to the bezel of the first batch, which was too tight, which made it difficult to turn easily. Sometimes bezels loosen over time, so my only concern is that the Panda bezel might become too loose within a year or two. Overall, I'm happy with the Panda bezel and ecstatic that LIW loosened it up. LIW smoothed this point in the case. This is a huge improvement as now you can wind the watch without grating your finger. This had been a major complaint of mine. The first batch had an anti-reflective coating overkill. This, along with the edges of the crystal creating too much distortion, made the original batch a little challenging to read. The Panda crystal is super clear now, and the edge of the crystal causes only minimal distortion. The Panda, unlike the first batch, is a super readable watch. The crown is now signed, yay. Before peeling the sticker of the Panda and cannibalizing it, I tested it on my time grapher to make sure the movement was within specification. My Panda is very accurate. It's running four seconds fast a day in the horizontal position and five seconds fast a day in the vertical position. The first two watches that I bought from LIW while well within specification were not very accurate. There may be aftermarket bracelets out there that are also good with the Panda that I'm unaware of. I thought about buying a strap code aftermarket bracelet, but from looking at the pictures of the strap code, it seemed to be using the same type of garbage sourced clasp that LIW uses. I've never tried the Jubilee style bracelet that came with the SKX and therefore cannot pass judgment on it. It's too bad that the watch industry gives consumers such dreck that we must resort to making our own watches. 
but you have to live in reality and make do with what is available. Please like, please subscribe.